So here we are, we have our timeline set, all of the colors that we want for our particular scene to set the mood, and we have all of our audio ready to go. Now it is time for us to deliver our project for the world to see, or family and friends, whoever you decide to show. But let me go ahead and show you guys how to export your project. So that way it is one actual file, seamless timeline, so that way you can share it with everybody you want to. Now, right away you're gonna see you have similar tabs. You have your render settings, you have your clips. These are your clips right here. We don't really need those. Um, you have your timeline, but I'm gonna be honest and say I've really not use this inside of the actual deliver tab, but it is kind of nice to be able to scrub through, make sure and uh, see that everything is working beautifully. So you're also gonna see in the top left, you have your settings. Now these are gonna be the export settings for your particular project. And then you have your render queue and we'll get to this guy here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and go over the render settings. Now, I'm not gonna dig into each of the codecs and what would be most beneficial for you, especially as this is a basics tutorial. So let me go ahead and just kind of lightly cover each of the presets available to you. So you'll see right away we have custom and we have our YouTube settings. You have Vimeo, Final Cut Pro 7, Premiere, XML. And these are if you wanna import this project into another um, video editor. So you could export it and it would create an XML format for Final Cut Pro. It would create an XML format for Premiere Pro, Avid, Pro Tools, and uh, you can just do the audio as well. So to make this easy, I'm gonna go ahead and select the YouTube um, export preset and I'm gonna switch it to 1080p. Like I said, we're gonna keep this simple. I wanna make sure everybody can see this and let's go ahead and move on down the line. So we have our location. I already have mine set at the video 12 folder where all of my source files are located. And then you have the option for single clip or individual clips. Now, if you were to do individual clips, it would do just that. It would actually render each of these clips individually for you to use in another product or another project maybe, or if you wanna edit them again, I don't know why you do that considering you already edited them inside of DaVinci Resolve. And uh, yeah, you can do individual clips or you can do single clip. And of course you have your in and out range where you can set it down here. You can do entire timeline or in and out and you can set in and out with the same hotkeys with I and O and then Alt I to remove it and Alt O to remove the out point. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do entire timeline. I'm gonna scroll down even further. You have video, audio, and file. So video is where you obviously set all of your video settings. Audio is where you set your audio settings. And file is where, of course, you can name your actual project file. So we'll call this Jennifer. And sounds like a perfect video name for me. So I'm gonna go ahead, check all my video settings. We have our resolution, of course, our frame weight. Frame weight. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Okay, and then you have your quality. Now, it, for YouTube, it typically tries to restrict it, but let's go ahead and set it to best just because we wanna have that little bit of extra detail for everybody on the YouTubes to see. You can continue scrolling down. You have your keyframes and coding profile. Again, you really won't touch this stuff unless you really know what you're doing. And I'll be honest, some of the video codecs still confuse me, so don't worry. There is a lot to absorb. Now, moving on down, you have your pixel aspect ratio. Like we discussed before, square is going to be best for you as Cinebascope is basically a way for them to squish the uh, really, really wide angle lenses that they have that almost look distorted. Cinemascope helps kind of push them back together so it looks like a regular image. Then you have data levels and then data burden. Use optimized media. No, you don't wanna use that because that would actually lower the quality even further more and enable flat pass. All of these advanced features. Again, you can dig into these later I really recommend for if you're a newbie to just start with the actual presets that they have available in DaVinci Resolve. So that is our video tab. Then you have the audio. You can export the audio. You can choose the bit depth. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 16. If you're doing something like, if you're actually gonna be having it heard in the theater, then you might wanna do 24 or 32 bits. But 16 is pretty good, especially when it comes to the web. 
Then you have your output track, which is your main stereo. And then of course, back to the file. And again, all we did here was just name it, or you can name it the timeline name. But that is pretty much it. So all we need to do, and of course you have your render speed. Sorry, should have mentioned that. Render speed, I always have it set to maximum. That is really it for all of the settings. So what we would do now is add this to our render queue. Now what the render queue is really nice for is if you have multiple timelines or if you were to have multiple scenes and you wanted to render each of them out individually so maybe you could add them in a whole nother DaVinci project and kind of sequence or sequence them for a full feature film, um, you could have this entire render queue which basically acts like, um, is it media encoder? I think that's it. But it acts like media encoder for Adobe. So you can have all these ready to go in your render queue, and then you literally just start, or you click start render. And that's it, we have done it, you guys. We have started from the very beginning, where we looked at importing media, we looked at editing media, we looked at coloring all of our media, and of course, tackling audio, which can be intimidating, but DaVinci Resolve made it super simple. And furthermore, we are delivering our project in this particular demonstration for all of YouTube to see. So we are done, you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this. I cannot tell you how much it means to me. And if you liked this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up so it could potentially help more people in the future because the, uh, the more amount of likes it gets, the more YouTube appreciates it, apparently. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you want to continue seeing me create, I'd really appreciate it if you considered contributing on our Patreon. It, it really would mean a lot. So I am rambling at this point. Thank you again so much for tuning in. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. Thanks again, everybody.